In this video, we will move from the simple RL circuit to creating a more realistic drive circuit for our inductor using our analog electronics components. First, we'll pick a BJT with datasheet parameters. Many models we use can be characterized from a datasheet using the built-in datasheet model builder, which is discussed in another video. Next, we will place the diode and then a 5 volt voltage source, which is what we had for an ideal pulse generator in the simple RL circuit video. Only this time we're going to use real switches and real electronics to create that 0 to 5 volt pulse. Lastly, we'll grab a part model that's been characterized from a datasheet from our library. The particular part that we will use here is an SCH1337 peak channel power MOSFET. Now let's simulate this circuit for 4 milliseconds. Once the simulation is complete, we can look at the input voltage, which is a nice constant 5 volts. We also have our pulse 5 volts. It goes a little bit negative where the diode is conducting, but it's basically going to zero. And then we have our current waveform, which looks just about like it did before when we had the ideal voltage generator. Now let's start looking at the stress and temperature rise inside one of the components. Here we will place our hot part monitor around the power MOSFET. This allows the monitor to be able to read the current through and the voltage across the component. And therefore it will be able to determine the power being dissipated in that part. We'll specify the thermal resistance at 156.2 degrees C per watt. That is the value that was given in the datasheet for this part, so that when we run our simulation, we'll now be able to see or estimate the internal junction temperature. We're going to run this simulation a bit longer to give time for the temperature to settle and for the average values inside the component to settle to their steady state values. We can see that the current waveform, 0 to 1 amp, is still the same. Now, if we look at our hot part monitor, we can see the temperature of the MOSFET. It appears to rise to about 32 degrees C from 27 degrees C, so it's not really getting all that hot. If we look inside the MOSFET itself, we can look at the average IDS current, and we can see that it's around 400 milliamps. Since this part is rated for two amps, there should be no problem here. This particular model also supports specifying the ratings on the part, so we can look at a signal called the stress ratio of the average current. This basically is a normalized current or a percentage of the total rated current. The graph shows this to be around 0.2 or 20% of our rated value. Lastly, let's simulate a fault condition. Let's set the resistance of this resistor from five ohms down to a half an ohm and run the simulation again. And this time we should expect to see some different results. After we run the simulation again, the graphs will be updated with new information. With this change, we now see an inductor current that goes up to a peak of almost 5 amps, and the temperature of the MOSFET is now around 160 degrees, so we're really starting to cook the part. There is now an average IDS current of over negative 2 amps, which puts the stress ratio of around 100% of the rated value. 